Hi, this is Peter Hintz, and you're listening to In the Lap of the Pods, Queen podcast. When I first heard them, I thought, what a bunch of tossers. They'll never make it. I was right. Welcome to In the Lap of the Pods Queen podcast with Paul, Joe and myself, David. It's another episode where we get the chance to speak to Peter Hans. Yep, also known as Ratty. Yep. Also known as Ratty, aye, absolutely. Um, but uh, really, really kind of um, excited to hear what Peter's got to say because Peter's got a new book coming out. Um, on the 12th of October and it's called Queen Uncovered so obviously Peter had a book out uh, a few years back called Queen Unseen um, which kind of talks about his his period with the band between 75 and, and 86 but this is kind of this kind of takes us a little bit further um, with his, his images his photography so it's kind of telling that story I guess a little bit more visually than his, his Queen Unseen book did in this episode we'd appreciate if you enjoy it And if you've got some money to spare, just even if it's just a couple of pounds, we would love it if you were able to donate to um, the Just Given page that we've set up. This is for Macmillan Cancer Support. So that's a charity close to Peter Hinsey's heart. So um, if you do enjoy the episode and you get something out of it, whatever you can afford would be really appreciate. We would really appreciate. And you can do so. That's justgiven.com forward slash page forward slash queen hyphen uncovered so that's justgiven.com forward slash page forward slash queen hyphen uncovered all right um so you can do that we'll put this on obviously you'll get the the link to this on the actual episode as well um, the information if case you quite can't quite remember that but um we'd appreciate it um because obviously peter's given up his time for free and we're giving you this episode for free and it's it's pretty special to be speaking to someone of this caliber um, yep. on this podcast so um we hope you'll You'll uh, you'll actually agree and and be able to help us out with this one. Just before Peter joins us, actually, I'll give you a little kind of bit of background on the book itself. So this is from the back cover, um, and what it says is: For eleven years, Peter Hans lived the rock and roll dream, head roadie for Queen. He held a backstage pass to the greatest show in music, rubbing shoulders with the band as they recorded, toured, and partied around the world. Now he is opening his incredible archive of intimate photographs and rare items, most never seen before, showing what life was really like with one of the greatest rock bands of all time. So that's the kind of back cover, and and Peter was quite uh, generous enough to give us a little advanced look at the book. Um, Aye, yep, so we've had a look over that, and mm-hmm. it's looking great. Um, even even on a, a digital screen, it's looking great. But I, I can't really actually get my hands on the actual the actual finished product. You know the yep. the hardback book. I think it will look amazing. Um, you know, in that that print form. But yeah, yeah. So we've had a, a look over it. So we feel very privileged to have. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, I totally. And, um, and uh, aye, so um, you can order the book, um, I think, um, over Amazon. Um, and if you actually go to peterhins.com, you'll actually get a little bit more information on the book um, as well. And I think you can possibly order signed copies from another publisher. Oh, but if you're can. just looking for the straight up book, go to Amazon and it's there to pre order. And 12th of October is when it's released. Yep, get it. Get it for your Christmas, nice early Christmas present, man. Exactly. A Halloween present. Halloween present, yep. Halloween, aye, aye. yeah. Yeah, which is more, uh, you know, more my season. Okay, um, with all the nonsense dispersed with, um, joining us now is Mr. Peter Hens. Hello, Peter. How are how are you? I'm pretty good, thanks, guys, and uh, thanks for having me on uh, on the show again. Oh, our pleasure, absolutely, <laughs> pleasure yeah, is totally. completely ours. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, Peter, obviously, you you know, you've you've got a book coming out next month on the twelfth of October, Queen Uncovered, and you were very kind enough to to let us see a, a a PDF of that 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 book ahead ahead of the podcast. And all three of us have looked over it many times and actually been discussing it in, in our own group chats on WhatsApp and things about certain images and and um, certain bits of information. So we've really really been enjoying it, and we can't wait to see the final 
vinyl yeah. product actually you know um and have it in our hands um but I know there's the preamble and you know and, and the book itself and the blurb and all that. But it's probably best if you describe the book to us and and your own your own words. Um, so how would you describe Queen Uncovered? I suppose it's the book I always wanted to do. I mean, when I wrote Queen Unseen and that came out, I think it was 2011, something like that, the hardback. Mm. And then I got uh, the chance to revisit it and edit it for the paperback version and remember other stories and yeah tighten it up and that's that was i think about four years later and that's much better i mean every mm -hmm. writer or creative person will say that as soon as it's finished next day you think well i could have done it better so yeah. Um, yeah. but i really think that the paperback is a much better read and i'd become a better writer i'd remembered other things and then other th things i'd put oh, maybe leave that out so i guess this is um flowing on from that really because after that book people kept saying oh why don't you do a photo book you know um because you've got so many great photos and I thought, well do i i don't know i've got enough and then i'd had some offers over the years but they were realistic or things i really wanted to go down and then it all kind of fell into place, really, um, uh, with, uh, well, Iconic Images, who are a great big um, archive. They have Terry O'Neill's archive. They have Gerard Mankiewicz's archive. They've got all these amazing photographers' archives, and which they license, and they have a gallery and uh, prints and all that. And their creative director had been in my printer's, and um, there was a 50 by 50 inch print of Fred, the one off the cover of uh, Queen Unseen, the one with the beer. Mm -hmm. And um, it was due to go off to Munich because they do incredibly well in Munich. Anyway, uh, she's like, wow. She said, whose is that? You know, and then printers were talking to her and she went, right, okay. Anyway, one day I was in there and she was in there and we just met up and, and then we got to know each other. And then she said, well, we do books. Would you be interested? And I went, yeah, all right. And um, <laughs> and then, um, and it was all very, very, um, not, I mean, I haven't even got a contract with them. I mean, wow. I do with a publisher, but not with Iconic. And it's very sort of, yeah, done on trust and, um, yeah. you know, and friendship and, and obviously the desire to put something together that's good. And, um, yeah, and I worked a lot on it, hell of a lot. But, as I say, I wanted it to be really good. And I had uh, a very good designer. And uh, he and I, you know, worked together a lot. And he came up with things. And if I wasn't happy, okay. Or might say, well, I don't think this quite works. So it was very constructive. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, and it came together did take a while but it wasn't difficult um, right. mm -hmm. because um the way the way i wanted to structure it was quite similar to queen unseen with having these sort of chunks of the band's career you know uh, like um, munich like on the road like montreux like south america um, live aid that kind of thing i mean i didn't have photos for everything so you know, we couldn't sort of do, yeah, well, there wasn't a Sun City um, section and Sun City never gets mentioned, but that's probably yeah. not a bad thing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even though I've got, I've got some imagery of Sun City, but anyway, um, and then we just kind of followed that format really. And, um, and I found stuff that I hadn't, um, you know, kind of, discovered for a long time and little bits of ephemera and that kind of thing. But what I wanted it to be was, I suppose in a way it is my journey because it talks about me with Bowie and with Mott and all that and meeting Queen. And so, yeah, it is my kind of journey with the band. And then a little bit afterwards with uh, Fred Solo stuff, doing pictures and that. But um, it, I also wanted to show the era and how, you know, we forget 
uh, you guys are too young anyway, but I mean, um, how us elderly people <laughs> forget or young people don't even know what, you know, things were like in the 1970s. So sure. that's why there are pictures of Madison Square Garden in 1980 with yellow cabs going past. And yeah. there's a picture of the Berlin Wall, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. and all those kind of things and truck stops and just that kind of um, imagery and ephemera that just gives a bit of an atmosphere and it's not like yeah. just pretty pictures of the band. So that's yeah. that's what I wanted to do. And then, yeah, tell little stories around things like set lists and, and that kind of thing, which was, um, yeah, it was nice to go back again and revisit it. Um, so, yeah, it was... Uh, it was a labour of love, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're talking about those images, um, you know, maybe off the beaten track images, not the regular images of the band as such. Um, even the one um, in the early days, I think it was, was it at Rockfield? No, or was it... Um, was it Ridge Farm. Ridge Farm. Ridge Farm, sorry, yeah, with Rogers said. Uh, uh, four by four gets stuck in the. In the oh, field. No, that was the manor. That was the manor. Oh, is yeah. that the manor? The manor, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Rachel Branches. Yeah, yeah, the manor. Now you can see it. You can see the towers and the manor in the background. And, background, right. Uh, right. And you've got Fred in the background there, Brian looking on. You've yeah. got Stone, you know, the engineer. So all those people, um, you know, kind of combined. And, and yeah, I mean, Roger, that wouldn't bother Roger when it was fun at the time. And <laughs> yeah. that was it. And then that night is when I drove Fred back to London and had the crash. And that's why. Was it that night? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's why that police letter is in there. Um, yeah, I, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, res absolves me of all um all guilt uh, <laughs> yeah. so putting those kind of things in was was quite nice and um uh yeah and ridge farm those pictures have never been seen inside the the studio there and mm -hmm. a lot of uh, stuff i had to do from scanning a contact sheet um because the negs have been lost years ago um right. a lot of them were lost in a certain office um and uh some of them I mislaid or whatever, and they've managed to um, to come up, yeah, quite well. Because mm, definitely, interestingly, um, there's a Paul McCartney show at uh, National Portrait Gallery uh, that opened to well reopened the National Portrait Gallery, and it's his pictures of the Beatles from really early days. And the same thing, he lost the negatives, so I had to scan them up from a contact sheet and then use a lot of, you know, magic imaging and stuff. Mm -hmm. And actually my printer, who prints all my stuff, uh, he did them. And, um, oh, cool. uh, and I mean, that show is is phenomenal. I mean, it looks amazing and just mm -hmm. so natural um, mm -hmm. and mostly all in black and white. So fortunately, you know, the new world, the digital world, you can you can do that stuff. So yeah. otherwise, yeah, those things would, would be gone forever. Um, I mean, there are some pictures from Montreux with looking down on the studio, a panoramic shot. Um, I don't yeah. know if you can remember. There's two or three other panoramic shots like the centre spread of jazz. But again, yeah. the negatives were lost. Yeah. And we had to scan from the contact and we got it up to a reasonable size, but they, they've never been seen before. So, yeah, that's, that's quite nice. And to give, yeah, give people a chance to see those. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, we could have done two books. I mean, there was a lot of stuff, but really? okay. the idea was, um, you know, unlike certain, um, people who like to uh, just keep re-releasing the same old stuff and uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. title on it. I just want all, <laughs> all the best stuff to go in here. And so yeah. you achieved that. I think it's just it's awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are a lot more shots, but who knows, maybe they'll say, well, it's been a big success. We'll do it again and make it bigger. Or mm -hmm. there's even talk of just doing one on Munich. So okay. let's see. But anyway, um, I know the advanced sales are really, really good. It, they've already sold a big bunch into America. Uh, German rights have been sold, Italian rights. Um, I think 
Hungary's on the table. So yeah, I mean, I'm obviously very gratified and, and pleased. So uh, yeah. Yeah, as you should be, as you should yeah, be, looks, because you're, you're, awesome. you're, you should be pleased with um, the product. I mean, because even you were talking earlier about the the collaboration with the, the designer of the book, but I think it looks lovely. You know, it's the way That's the pages awesome. are laid out. You know, really looks looks special. Yeah, uh, I mean, when you go to the chapters, and there's always some copy, and then mm. on the right hand page at the top, there's a little bit of imagery to give you a little flavour of what it's going to be. Yeah, and then you go into it and. Um, uh, yeah, so it did work quite well like that. Um, and just little anecdotes, little stories. Um, yeah, there's a few new bits in there. I mean, I didn't cut and paste from Queen Unseen. I, I rewrote the whole thing based yeah. on, on this. And then that's what the um, the publisher then, yeah, he did a bit of an edit and whatever, and, and we got there. So Yeah, excellent. Um when you're looking at the images, Peter, um, when you were, I guess, assembling them for the book, um, I'm going to assume there was ones you hadn't seen for, for many years, and, and, and having look, looked at those images, were, were memories just coming back, looking at these images, was or, or is it all pretty much there anyway? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot more hair then, you know. <laughs> and I was a cup two or three stone lighter. Um, <laughs> so... Um, yeah, um, I suppose, it, yeah, you've got this kind of well, parallel of just as we spoke earlier about the Freddie auction at Sotheby's and mm -hmm. going through and people said, oh, were you emotional? And um, not particularly. I mean, it was like, oh, yeah, great. I remember that, you know. And, oh, yeah, God, yeah. yeah. I mean, he could hardly fit into that. And I remember him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> how tight it was or he wouldn't wear that because it was too hot on stage or as I say, they were his working outfits, his tools for his trade, you know, and um, of course it was, it was emotional on a certain level, but I mean, I did, you know, go, Oh God, I'm longing for that. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was interesting because um the jacket that he's wearing on the cover of my book with the beer. Um, mm -hmm. We couldn't find it. And I had a private tour. They gave me a private tour in the end. And um, I wasn't that bothered to go, but my partner who's from Munich and she said, Oh, I'd love to go, you know, because she knew the band and stuff. Oh, I'd love to go. All right. And then we did find that leather jacket tucked away. And the girl said, Oh, do you want to try it on? You know, I said, well, never fit me. And so, <laughs> And so my partner had it, and she recreated the pose of Fred with the beard. Brilliant. Oh, cool. lovely. <laughs> cool. cool. But they didn't, they hardly pushed that jacket at all. It still went for about mm. 27 grand. But I mean, he yeah. wore it a lot more than people say. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that image and whatever. And then, you know, sort of odd, strange things, well, as I say, like, basically an unused pair of trainers going for 50 grand. So uh, ah, yeah. Insane. yeah, totally. But um, yeah. So I suppose in some ways there are parallels revisiting, you know, Fred with the exhibition, revisiting the whole band and my past with, with the book, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it was quite satisfying. And um, you know, the end of the day, I mean, I'm very pleased with it. And like my written book, there's nothing in there to upset people, you know. And yeah. and if people don't like it, well, I don't really give a toss, you know. So, <laughs> Quite right. Uh, they, but um, I think, you know, uh, objectively, it's done pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. Done, yeah, a lot better than a lot of other books out there who, you know, get churned out and don't have as much thought or whatever or, or to be fair, they're not put together by people who had the knowledge and yeah, yeah, not yeah absolutely. trying to be arrogant or anything, but you know, oh, you were there. Yeah. You were there. I was there, you know, 24 seven and I know what happened and, and all of that. So it makes it, yeah, a lot more intimate. So oh, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm pleased with it anyway. So yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing without blowing smoke. Um, well, the sun don't shine and all that. Um, you, you're quite, you're almost, I don't want to say you're unique in that um, respect, but you're you're one of a, a select few of people who don't exploit 
yeah, totally. a situation that could be very, very easily mm. exploited. Yeah, you absolutely. know. Um, yeah, I mean, there are people who were with the band and around the band who, uh, yeah, I think they take advantage in different ways, um, which I certainly don't approve of. Um, you know, I don't want to become some circus sideshow, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. Um, I get lots of invites to do all these conventions and all these kind of things. And, you know, I have a busy life and, um, you know, I've got, well, sadly, my dad died recently, but um, I've still got my mum to care for quite a lot now. And I'm in Munich a lot of the time. And so, you know, I I can't commit to all these things. And you know, some people are very understanding and, and, and very respectful. And other people, you know, are sort of not quite rude. It's like, well, why don't you want to do it? And it's like, well, yeah. because you, I don't yeah. necessarily have the time. And it's not, I, I never ask for any money or anything like that. I yeah, mean, yeah. pay your expenses, but it's like, mm -hmm. and then people think, oh, it's all about money. And it isn't. I mean, I don't, certainly don't, um, you know, ask money yeah. for these things. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'd rather give the money, well, like you guys, to charity. So, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. So, absolutely. yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Say my conscience is clear, you know. So, I mean, absolutely, I absolutely, yeah. I mean, this cup here, actually, I mean, that was Fred's favorite coffee mug, and I used to give him that every sound check. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, um, unfortunately, there are no photographs of, of it. Um, <laughs> but it's believed uh, to be the mug, though. It's I can to assure be the mug. you. No, no, no. I can assure you. <laughs> I was his wife, it's bound to be. And I mean, seriously, I mean, I could put all kinds of things into auction and, yeah. you know, make a lot of money. But it's yeah, just but, wrong, you know. Yeah, like, because it, at the end of the day, somebody, you obviously had a, a, a close relationship, you know, whether it be a working relationship, you're still close to the guy. So it's totally understandable that you wouldn't exploit that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I mean, you know, I kind of think that, you know, in some ways he's looking after me now. I mean, yeah. You know, with the the thing in Munich and the book sales, I mean, sorry, the print sales, which is just going fantastic. The exhibitions, um, which have been in Italy and another one in Munich and, and, and all of that stuff. And then I did a few talks before COVID. And so, yeah, I kind of think he looks looks down on me and thinks, you know, well, yeah, that's all right, you know. And then I'm not yeah. Selling my story to you know the gutter press or um, yeah. you know making outlandish claims and just yeah cheapening um, cheapening the legacy you know um, yeah yeah absolutely or, or betraying confidences because yeah uh, it's just for me it's just not the right thing to do you know yeah so, no, no absolutely that's a real I mean, quality I think, <laughs> yeah no indeed it is <laughs> indeed it is. Yeah. That was Fred's yeah. mantra, you know, quality and style. Um, yeah, well, that's um, it, yeah. With quality and style, it will always come through, you know. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and I, I saw Mac a couple of weeks ago. I was in, um, oh, excellent. in cool. Germany, and um, we went to a, a beer garden, had lunch together, and, um, yeah, and, you know, Mac is still the same. He's still very, you know, calm, gentle guy, and, um, yeah, you know, obviously has – Fantastic memories, and um, I don't think he saw the auction uh, or came over and saw it or anything. And um, yeah, I think he felt that it was a shame in some ways. But um, you know, uh, and I spoke to Mike Moran, and Mike said, "Oh, he said, yeah, I, I saw some of the gifts I gave to Fred in cabinets." You know, yeah, oh, cool. And, um, I don't know if you know that Montserrat Kabai's daughter. Um, she sang, um, there was some private event before the auction. And I think it could have been Mike played the piano at the Yamaha. Oh, and then wow. awesome. Montserrat's daughter was singing and there was some cocktail party or something. Amazing. Ah. Yeah. And then they got Mike to authenticate whether he'd written certain things down, which he did. And he said, and they sold for 57 grand. He said to me, um, I'll have to knock a few more out, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
But but no, I mean, you know, Mike and Mac, they're the real deal. They, you know. Yeah. Had, yeah, they, they can exploit it as well, but they don't, yeah. Don't, yeah. yeah. They had great working relationships with Fred and there was huge respect. And they're both, you know, brilliant at what they do and, and yeah. still do. Um, mm. I know Max has so, been working with Billy Squire again recently. Oh, right, oh, right, right, right. right. Yeah. And there was a gift Billy bought for Fred that was in the sale. Um, after he did the work on Love is the Hero and mm. laid it with the tenor sax, and I was with him, and um, and we went round to Fred's house and played him the cassettes, and he was like, um, "Oh, I think you could do this, dear, that, dear." And in the end, Fred came in the studio and reworked it with him. Right. Never cost a penny, anything, you know. So yeah. then Billy said, "Oh, I want to buy him a gift," and so we went out down the King's Road. There was this Art Deco shop, and picked out this this silver stylized fox on a marble base and used to sit on his coffee table and, uh, oh, and that, was in, that was in the sale so um i think billy i think you'd have quite liked to have it back but um yeah yeah went, that nice yeah went for a lot of money so um but anyway so um yeah and of course, your, your some of your prints um, were in the auction as well, Peter. That, that's right. I think there was four, four prints. Um, oh, well, yeah, that's right. For about 20, 20 something thousand pounds. Just over twenty grand. I mean, cheap, really. Someone got a bargain, you know. And they weren't yeah, absolutely. Designed, you know. So um, yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> yeah, uh, they were gifts to Fred from me, and um, because yeah, uh, he was kind enough to give me work as a photographer when I left the band, you know, um, and believed in me and, um, you know, supported my decision to go off and do something creative. So yeah, that was, that was great. And, um, I say I had a couple of them hand colored, the pink suit, great pretender one and, um, the robes one, uh, which is not the one, like the one I sent you guys, slightly different image. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, and also the background is completely bleached to white, whereas yeah. you've got, you have the whole background with the, you know, mm. all the studio bits and the, yeah, the yeah. Glass scaffold and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he loved that. He liked that. He said, yeah, well, that's the, that's me. I'm the great pretender, you know, mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. you know, silly old tar, um, in a crown <laughs> and robes, but mm -hmm. to make that you need, the bits of gaffer tape and the poles and the totally. uh, so I think he liked that sort of contrast really. Yeah. Um, and um, funny enough, I've had few requests since. I mean, I had one about ten minutes after those prints sold. So um, yeah. we'll, we'll see. Anyway, so excellent. Yeah. Well, it's actually the, it was interesting in you and you coming back to the book um, because you the, the the image of Freddie with a pink suit on and with you know with hands in the air. And it was the way it was. It was I forget the process, but it left those black marks all over the the image. Wow. And I, I remember seeing that image many years back, and I thought it was just an effect, or uh, you know, I thought it was deliberate, you know. But you, I found oh, out um, obviously reading the book, it wasn't, you know. It's a Polaroid, um, and with black and white Polaroids, you had a negative, and um, when um, you you peeled it back, there was a negative, and with the pack of Polaroid, there was this chemical and it came and it was like a sort of sponge and you could wipe it onto the negative mm -hmm. and there was another one to wipe onto the print and it would keep them. Otherwise, the print would completely fade um, mm -hmm. and just bleach out and then it would retain uh, the negative. And I, I kept up hold of those negatives and then um, uh, years ago, my printer... Um, uh, he uh, he printed them up, and now, obviously, digital age. I had a high res scan done because this stuff's organic and it won't last forever. Yeah. And funny enough, Fred liked that as well because some people say it looks like butterflies, some people yeah. say it looks like stars or kind of you know confetti, and it's just contamination. That's all it yeah. is. Nothing else. Um, just pure coincidence, really. And that's why, um, yeah, that's why we put that in the book, you know. So if you are enjoying this episode, um, we'd really love you to donate to the Just Given page that we've got set up. So that's justgiven.com 
forward slash page forward slash queen hyphen uncovered and we'll put this in the description of the podcast so um, whatever you can can afford we'd really really much appreciate it it's a, a charity close to Peter's heart and yeah in memory of my dad so there you go so. excellent thank you gents I've, I've i've been kind of dominating here is there anything you wanted to kind of come in with um here to, to ask Peter? yeah i i want to ask you about um the image for the play the game single mm-hmm. um yeah I, 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 like everyone else you mentioned it in the book um i i thought the background was fire mm-hmm. and it's not it's water it's and it's incredible how you come up with this this image, you know, so you, so it's a, it's a picture that you took of a, a river, or a weir, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's um right outside the Munich Hilton, and um it's I can't remember the name of it, but it runs into the Isar, the main river, and uh, and at that time I just got this new camera, and I got these filters, which which used to give you uh, color in the sky. They graduated, so you could slide them up and down. You could make the sky sort of darker or whatever or give it a pink hue or whatever it is and i just because photography was my passion i was just playing around and um i've been asked to do the pictures of the band for the game uh inside and all that you know and um and then uh, i was playing around with these when everything was processed and i got a light box and um and fred was coming along said, what are these dear what are these and i said oh and I'd use these rainbow filters and these, oh, yes, let me look. And it was Fred who did it. I mean, Fred mm-hmm. took the image of the band and got the other one, and he went, that's it, dear. that's what we want, you know. And, of course, in those days, to comp something like that together, it was very difficult before digital. Yeah, you could do it um, in seconds now, probably, yeah. And and the hardest thing of all it was always Brian's hair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can cut round things, but... Um, but yeah, that um, and we kind of wanted to put those stories in the book because it is a photography book, and yes, in some ways, it's my journey as a photographer to kind of mm. becoming a better photographer and getting to the level where I could, you know, think, well, maybe I can make a living out of this, and um, so yeah, quite fortuitous, like a lot of things in life. Um, but I think when they did the video, it was fire. They used a background blue screen of yeah. fire, um, definitely. But um, um, for the shot, no, it's the uh, – and I think they they show four different pictures, so you can see the water. Yeah, there's four of them, yeah. Yeah, so that gives you – Yeah. I think it's just – and there's a picture of the camera as well. I've still got the – it was taken on, so cool. – those kind of stories are quite nice, um, how they came about. Um, and, um, yeah, and a few others. I think there's the overhead ones in Japan where I put the camera in the lighting rig and um, yeah, my, my remote awesome. control. Um, and there's a few of those. I think there's a little story about it. And, um, yeah, uh, because, I mean, in the Sotheby's sale, there were loads of Fred's Polaroids from the, the old SX-70. Mm-hmm. And um, and he loved um, you know using it back then. I mean, uh, and obviously that collection went for an incredible amount of money. And yeah. and I think I'm in some of them. Uh, I probably even took some of them. So uh, so yeah, but a different type of Polaroid. I mean, um, the one I had was specialised to go on the back of the camera, so it was the same size as the frame of the camera, mm-hmm. whereas. Fred had the you know the SX seventy where it it came out the front. You had a battery pack with it, six or eight, I think, and they were all the rage in the seventies. So, um, mm. uh, so yeah, um, again, it's all part of that era, you know. I mean, uh, yeah. it's not doing it on your phone now. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah, again, showing how things were done. Um, to create those things, which could be done very simply now, um, but you still had to think of the ideas. But uh, but no, definitely the one of putting that coloured top in was that was Fred. That was Fred's idea. Yeah, awesome. We were just talking. We were just talking as well before 
but before we came on here, Peter, um, that you know, it's very rare to see pictures of Freddie smiling, and I just thought it was awesome that you know you've got that picture, the one where he's got the big, the big massive smile. I think it's from the well, it's like the Maiden Heaven, video. a hard life video, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's one of my favourite pictures because you actually see, you actually see the guy light up in the picture, and I think that is brilliant that you captured that because it's very rare to see that. Yeah, I mean, um, I think because uh, of the relationship we had, he never felt threatened. And yeah, um, yeah. if you, if you're a, if he's in front of a press photographer or photographer, he, he you know didn't know, it stiffens up a bit and the top lip comes down, and and it's the, you know, whatever he used to do, or the, yeah. the shoulders come up and it's the macho thing. Yeah. But I, and and also, you know, when you have a camera, a 35 mil camera pointed at you, I mean, it's quite an aggressive thing in a way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's invasive, yeah. And so, you know, people do, um, I suppose, go into some sort of auto pose or whatever it is. But um, I mean, when you see film clips, you'll often see Fred laughing a lot, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And this is, I mean, I know it's an old subject. But in the movie, yeah. Rap Malik doesn't laugh once. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't yeah. laugh once. Yeah. I don't think he even smiles in the film, or he might give a half smile. Yeah, can I? I, told I just think, but Fred used to laugh, and he used to shriek with laughter. You know, yeah. at the most yeah. ridiculous things. So that was part of his character. And I yeah. think, um, yeah, there are some cheeky pictures of him in in there, and um, yeah, you can see he's. Uh, He's he's laughing for me or whatever. So uh, so I think I was very lucky in that having that relationship with him that um, he would do that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I could catch him off guard, like when he was a bit more thoughtful. Um, yeah. Things like that picture of Queen Unseen, where his head's dropped down. The beer and just for a split second, he looks very vulnerable. You know, absolutely, yes. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That, yes, even yeah. though you know he's got a leather jacket and jeans on, he's holding a beer in a phallic yeah. way. Um, <laughs> and I've got a few pictures like that of him um, where the head has just dropped and he looks, yeah, very contemplative sort of thing. Yeah, yeah contemplative and, and vulnerable and just mm -hmm. human. You know, human. Yeah, human. Yeah, yeah totally. That's it. And I think that's that's the the beauty of your images, Peter. You know, yeah, I think we would totally. all agree with that is we we, we see human more human um you know you know human elements of the band in these pictures. Um the, your pictures of John, I absolutely love your pictures oh, of John. Brilliant. Um, yeah. um There's one with John laughing. Yes, yeah, brilliant. Huge mm -hmm. laugh. Yes. Yep. Uh, and and this one is it looks actually quite mean and moody. He's got the the brown leather jacket on, and he's got the telecaster. The telecaster. telecaster. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, love that photo as well. A sound check, yeah, um, yeah. But the one of him laughing that's in Montreux in '78, and uh, yeah, that's yeah. I mean, again, I mean, all the band, you know. Sorry, it's pissing it with rain here. Fuck me, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you'll have to edit that. That's all right, mate. We're Scottish. Don't worry about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a rain filter. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, all the band, I mean, you know, they all had great humour and they all loved to laugh and, and particularly in the studio and, and we'd enjoy a lot of the same humour. You know, it was Faulty Towers or whatever it might be. And, um, yeah, uh, and Rog too. I mean, Brian, you know, it, we all used to just have good laughs together because yeah. uh, and sometimes you're in danger of taking everything too seriously. And, um, yeah. and also I think part of the job of being one of the crew was, even though we never had an official job description, was to lighten the mood sometimes, you know, yeah. Yeah. and kind of um, – you know, when you could see things were getting tense or whatever, then you'd just go in and make some stupid comment or whatever. Or you'd do an impression of someone that, you know, they thought would be amusing or whatever. So yeah. there was always a lot of humour around. And yeah, in the band, they took their music seriously, but 
well, obviously the break free video and things like that. Yeah. They could they could have a good laugh at themselves. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, you were talking about, um, I think before you came on, Peter, we were again discussing the images and then the book itself. Um, and Paul, you were talking about um, the picture of Fred when he first grows the, the moustache. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was just that it, it's just great that you you were there, um, you know, when he'd just grown the, the moustache. And then at the, the video for the, the Great Pretender when he's you know, getting his shaved hey, off. You know. Yeah, yeah, and it's just amazing that you were there at both those, you know, uh, well, the exactly. evolution. Yeah. Well, I mean, it kind of was that was a sort of came very quickly that idea of having the first and, and the last because I don't think after Great Pretender he ever grew it again. I don't think. No, I don't think. No, I don't think so. No. To my knowledge, later no. videos. I mean, he has you know a beard sort of thing but older, yeah. he had a sort of wispy beard i think to obviously hide his skin and and the fact oh. that sadly is he was getting a bit gaunt and all that but yeah i don't think he ever grew the tash again and um no, no. yeah but yeah i mean it was it was just spontaneous i mean um we're in music land and um the table there and there's other pictures taken around that table where, um, I mean, he's leaning at me during breakfast, looking at me. You got Brian eating breakfast, and that was just like where we used to hang out. And then he says, he said, "Ratty, come on," he said, um, "You know, with your Polaroid thing." He said, "Take a picture of me." I said, "All right, Fred. I want to see how I look. I want to see how I look." <laughs> Yeah, all right. And then he was and he was so impatient because you have to wait 60 seconds. <laughs> and depending on what the temperature is, if it's a bit cooler, you have to wait a bit longer. Come on, come on, come on. Give it to me, give it to me. And I mean color ones, they don't have negatives, but um uh anyway, oh I look marvelous, don't I? I'm like, <laughs> well, I think the jaw is out, Fred, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> but if you look at him um in that picture. It just looks like a, a young man. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. and he was probably what would he have been then? Thirty two, thirty three, I suppose. In nineteen, yeah. it was nineteen eighty. So yeah, in about, about thirty three or something. One of the one of the pictures in your book is one of my favourite images of Freddie I've ever seen. Is the one where he's sitting with the acoustic guitar, and then he's sitting at the table. Um, oh yeah. Uh, that, that that's again, the same that's, table. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's such a great, great image. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, that was the picture that uh, certain people wanted to publish uh, in yeah, the, yeah, 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 catalogs. Um, and um, if you look, if you well, if if you know a little bit about guitar, he's playing a D chord, which yep, is yep. a crazy little thing. You know, I mean, that's the intro. So yeah, people totally. think, oh, that he's he's writing it there. You know, yeah. And I can't remember what he was playing. He might have been. I mean, it was it was certainly around that time, but I think Crazy had already been laid down by then, maybe. But right. that used to happen. I mean, he'd just grab a guitar and he'd do something um in rehearsals or say at the dinner table. But they all would, you know. They'd all yeah. so but no, and there's a contact sheet um that goes with it. You've got the Picture of Fred with the guitar. Then you see the contact sheet, and there's one where he's holding up a magazine with a yeah. picture of himself in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with all these, you know, macho leather mm -hmm. cap gear on and all that. And he's laughing in a couple as well, and it works quite nice as a little set. And yeah, they're great. I love those images. They're, they're really yeah. brilliant. Yeah. So um, th those kind of things, and they, well, they give you the sense of that era, you know, because. So many people think of Fred as having a yellow jacket and a moustache. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that, yeah, totally. And you know, forget when you know he had all the low, long, flowing locks and the you know yeah. the satin and the sequins and the platform shoes and and yeah. all that. Which, uh, yeah, probably I preferred that. Um, yeah, yeah, us too. I think yeah. <laughs> I think we agree. Yeah, <laughs> but we, we love. I think we love all. I love all, 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 all 
uh, Freddie and self image wise, but yeah, the seventies sort of ticks a box for us, you know. The late, especially um, the late seventies for me. I, I I liked the macho look. I thought that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> which, which look? Sorry, the the macho look with the leather cap. I like. Oh, yeah, I liked, the leather yeah, cap. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember at the time that um, there was a a thing with with him and was it Rob Halford from Judas Priest? Because that's right. Yeah, they were both yeah. rocking that that same sort of biker look at exactly. the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, well, the village people as well. <laughs> <laughs> the first time he wore one of those caps on stage was in the States, and it wasn't a leather one. It was um, a chauffeur's cap. And oh, right. uh-huh. Uh-huh. Chauffeurs. It's the same shape, yeah. but it was like grey felt with a black band or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, and he took it off the chauffeur, and I remember he wore it on stage and then mm-hmm. soon, soon afterwards got the leather caps and one had a chain and one didn't and but yeah yeah but it first time i think it was boston actually and um cool. like what are you doing wearing a chauffeur's hat fred you know? <laughs> <laughs> think, um, brilliant and he changed it to uh you know the pvc or the leather or whatever it was so yeah but yeah that was the that was the sort of change of image if you like that was 79 80 doing the game um, when arguably you could say Queen uh, changed from being a really good heavy rock band to becoming a really good commercial rock band. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally. That machine. Yeah. Game. Yeah. Um, I mean, I still think the game is a really good album. And, yeah. oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of my, one of my favorites actually. Yeah. I was listening to Dragon Attack the other day. Oh, great and, song! And was like, "Fucking hell!" I mean, you know, this is mm. this really hits the groove. And then yeah. all the percussion, because all the crew played percussion on it. Oh, really? really? Oh, right, yeah. amazing! Flash yeah. things and maracas and not excellent, whatever. And um, and there's a bit in there, uh, in the middle, where there's a drum break. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm. And I remember, and it was Max's idea. And it's actually two snare drums uh, tuned differently. And oh, he did it cool. in the middle of the room. And uh, I can remember, I can visualize it now. And um, Roger having the two, he wasn't in the drum booth, did it in the middle of the studio and just playing with them until he could get them to sound different, you know. And yeah. uh, and it's great, that and a brilliant oh. idea. That's mm. excellent. Everybody gets a little solo in that song. There's like a wee bass solo as well, and there's right. there's obviously the, the drum break and, and then the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's um, a it is. It's um, uh, it's a great track, and it's well, the idea came from the Sugar Shack. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, I've heard unbelievably ridiculous theories that it's all about heroin. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> chasing uh, the dragon and all that. Exactly, and yeah, like, yeah. no, I mean. Yeah, well, as you know, there's if you play another one, bites the dust backwards at the end, it says smoke marijuana. Apparently, smoke marijuana. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> his whole aim was to put in some subversive, you know, <laughs> dope message. I mean, that was the easy. <laughs> people have anything else better to do with their fucking lives, you know, than just yeah. make all this stuff up? Or uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, probably they've been. On bit too much wacky backy you know so, <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah but um but another game i mean that period and there's a pi- picture of roger playing guitar in the studio as well that's a great picture yeah mm-hmm. brilliant yeah a schecter and uh, so one of the first ones yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's quite yeah. a modern looking guitar actually because yeah. yeah. they started making them for pete townsend didn't they exactly that was yeah. it yeah. uh and i remember going because i knew uh Townsend's Road, you know, the Who's Road is really well. And I remember going to Hammersmith to see them and um, and he came sound check and his roadie came on and plugged this thing in. And then I think it was the volume control. You pulled it out a bit and it was like some kind of signal boost. And he mm. played a chord and it was like, fuck me, this is good. Okay, and, um, yeah, cool. yeah, so you're right. They were Towns, Townsend to start with. And then... Mm. Um, Roger had one. Roger had more guitars than anyone else. Um, really? Mm. Yeah. I mean, if you look in those pictures of the studio um, in Munich and there's rows of guitars. Yeah. I mean, the solo in Crazy uh, was played on um, uh, one of Roger's guitars. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. 
the black telecaster yeah. i bought brian for the uh for the video he didn't have it and up until the video so right. mm. that was never never in the studio um but it might mm. have been later on for hot space or something but it was one of Rogers. He had some really old Telecasters. Yeah. He even had a broadcaster. Broadcaster, yeah, yeah. Number 17 or something, yeah. Something crazy. I mean, that's yeah. 1948 or something. I mean, yeah. Uh, wow. yeah. And that's the one Brian plays in um, the back chat video. Back chat, yeah. Uh, that's right, yeah. And it's, yeah. it's Rogers. So, um, um, so yeah, that, that whole period of um, uh, experimentation, they had the Lynn drum machine then um which was used for various stuff um and yeah and it was a i think it was a very happy time as well for the band um mm -hmm. because um they'd gone into munich and uh it was the end of the year out the tax year and all that no pressure uh just put some stuff down they met mac and like everything in life, it was all just things at the right time, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, they got on really well with Mac. Everybody loved Munich. They could be who they wanted to be. No one bothered them. Studio was great. And so it was conducive to, yeah, putting down good songs. And yeah. there was so much stuff that never got used from uh, the game. Really? Oh, stuff okay. that... Stuff of Fred's, I don't think it's ever, ever come out. It's very simple things, almost like sound a bit like Cliff Richard, very sort of light and poppy. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably in some uh, evil villain's vault. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things that, we, you know, as, as vault, but, um, you want to hear, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, that time was great and we all all ate together and we all drank together went to the sugar shack and i mean fred used to come as well i mean when all the gentlemen's clubs had closed he would come on and um then we go back to the hilton be a party in his suite or in rogers or yeah and i think um i think particularly that the game album even though it was done in different periods um i think it was a very happy time and having a number one single in america well, when we hadn't even finished the album, well, that was uh, that was pretty good. Uh, I remember funny. Paul Paul Prenter came in, and uh, we were in the control room, and he came in. I said, I was wanting to be important. I've got something important to tell you guys. You're number one in America. And they went, yeah, we know already. We <laughs> <laughs> shot him down. <laughs> so first this bubble, you know, and it was like. <laughs> Let's have a couple of drinks then, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> no, you man. Let's have a light ale or something, you know, or a sherry. Or something, but, um, <laughs> no, I, I, Talking about the crazy little thing uh, video, um, Peter, I know the, it was the Throw These Hands. Do, do you know which set of hands are yours? Do you know what I think they the are? Ones are the, mine are the ones that are the wrong way around, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they're supposed to be facing one way, mine are facing the other way, I think. <laughs> right. And I know that I was because we were lying on our backs and my and I, I think Crystal was behind me. I mean, all we were trying to do was look through the hole up at those girls. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. <laughs> Schoolboy stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, um, you know. So, yeah, I put a few more images from there. Uh, there's a different one of Fred with a dancer in there. Um, and in Munich, there's... Uh, Roger with the drum sticker. It's a different yeah. image. Um, it's not the one that was in my other book. So I just wanted to kind of, yeah, put a little twist on it. So, you know, when all the pedants, who I'm sure there'll be many, say, well, that picture was in your other book. And that's it. No, it wasn't. It was a different no, yeah. Yeah. So Just to try and give, apart from the completely new one, something different take on it. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that chapter was good. And, um, there's uh, there's a story, I mean, in it, I show, like, pictures of Munich in the snow, and you've got the trams, and it's snow everywhere, and you've got the sort of advertising for beer on the side of the tram to, you know, date it to being 40-something years old. Yeah. Anyway, I was, um, I was in Munich uh, a while ago, uh, my partners, and we were down in the cellar of the house where she is, and um, I said, have you got any old Deutschmarks? And she said, I don't know. Anyway, I 
just by sheer chance, I found a Deutschmark. And it was dated 1979. And that was when we first went to Munich. And that's oh, when I first, I first met her. And oh, so yeah. that, that's in the book. And it just says that, you know, then touring Europe, it was Deutschmarks. It was French, the French, French Franks. It was, yeah. you know, and, yeah. Dutch Cretins or whatever they are, or I don't know, yeah. Swedish Krona. And, uh, people forget that, you know, you had to change all your money from country uh, to country. Yeah. And, yeah. and they used to stamp your passport. Uh, so as you probably saw through the book, you've got stamps from passports and visas and just to give it that flavor really, you know, of, um, yeah, of that time. Yeah. How it was. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm particularly happy with the Munich section. Um, I think yeah. that works, works very well. Um, uh, obviously, and I think I put in the book, I wasn't the band's official photographer. So, there's not many live shots. It was only, there were a few occasions I was asked to take some pictures. So all the live shots are only for, ever from about three or four shows ever. So, yeah. and then things like the tie your mother down video uh, was a video. So I got mm -hmm. shot in from there. So, um, um, so yeah, I mean, but I think there's enough just to give a bit of flavor anyway. So, yeah, I mean that that live shot. Of, sorry, Joe. Just no, uh, carry on, mate. Carry that on. live shot um, of Freddie at the piano, and you've got John in the silhouette. Yeah, I just oh, nah, that's that's that's, 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 that's yeah. superb. I love yeah. that. That's that's one of my favourites, I would say. And mm. uh, and I wanted to do that for myself because I saw that every night. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. And I knew the colours the lighting designer used, and and I could see John in silhouette and. You know, usually he was in the same position, so he wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, behind Fred. He was just to the side, and I just yeah. thought, I've got to do it. And yeah. I knocked off a few frames one night, and that was it. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, quite satisfying, you know, to get those, because during the show, there are certain things you would see that really stick in your mind, you know? Oh, like yeah, totally. Fred out front on the catwalk and, you know, giving it all and get the audience to sing back and that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, to, to have some of those uh, little live shots in that uh, is, awesome. is very, yeah, it's very rewarding. So, yeah. I was going to ask as well, Peter, um, there's a few images from the Princess of the Universe video. Uh -huh. I was just going to ask a wee bit about that. Did you get Brian the Flying V guitar for that video, or do you know oh, yeah. <laughs> the Flying V guitar? He plays like a a white Flying V in that uh, it's video. A, uh, it's not a Flying V. I think it's I think it's, it's a Jackson, Washburn or something. Is it? Oh, or Washburn. Or Washburn. Yeah, yeah, Washburn. Yeah, yeah right, I, think, okay. I think it's Washburn. I mean, the Flying V. I bought him. Uh, well, I bought it for myself, and then. He said, oh, I've always wanted a flying V. So right. he ended up with Brian. It's like I, I bought a Dobro in a pawn shop in Seattle. And he was <laughs> like, oh, I've always wanted a Dobro. Oh, okay, Brian. You know. <laughs> just <laughs> stealing all your guitars. <laughs> well, no, I got the money for it, you know. But uh, anyway, oh, yeah. just. Anyway, um, the um, the flying V he ended up using in uh, on tour in 82 because he smashed the, white, uh, the backup, the John Birch white one. So uh -huh. he had to have okay. Flying V as a backup, but it's a different in Prince's. Yeah, I mean, I think it's Washburn. I couldn't swap. Right. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so uh, but no, I mean, I had no choice over what they were playing or wearing. It was just uh, yeah, just because you were saying about Roger with the you know the telecast, I thought maybe. You know, maybe you'd give him it. It was an errand, uh, you know, to go and get a uh, kind of jaggy looking yeah, guitar. Go, go and get a, a heavy metal looking <laughs> guitar. Yeah. John plays a different bass in that. Um, yeah, it's right, like a, yeah. It's got a weird headstock on it. I think it's... Yeah, it's uh, kind of wooden and it's quite, quite kind of jaggy yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, and he, he also used that, I think, in some of the later videos. And there was yeah. another strange guitar he had for the... Friends will be friends. Yes, I think it's the same oh, one. It's yeah. a brown one. It's yeah, that, that. yeah, it's got yeah. A weird headstock. headstock uh, yeah. Like a hook. And I mean, I think basically, um, someone offered him the guitars for free and, and said, "Oh, well, you know, if you could put it in a photo or a video or something," and he did. And yeah. I mean, back then, 
we used to be given things, but there was never any contracts, you know. Yeah, you know. yeah. We used to get given, you know, Nike and Adidas shoes, Puma, loads of Puma stuff from Germany. Mm -hmm. And never any contracts, never any money, you know. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So different world, you know. So yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, I oh. think they got uh, they got good coverage. Uh, the, the absolutely. So, well, absolutely. The, the, the Adidas became... Like kind of synonymous with Freddie, didn't it? You know, with yeah, the Fred, even they you know, were all the, wearing them at one point. Weren't yeah, they? totally. They were, yeah, yeah. yeah. run about the works sort of time. They were. Yeah, yeah. Then, well, Adidas was German, German as well. You know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You were talking about your own exhibition, uh, Peter. You know, um, it was in Munich this year, wasn't it? And now, now it's in Julia, is it at the moment, or or has been? I had one in Munich. Um, it was almost a couple of years ago, and it was for the 30th anniversary of Fred, you know, passing. So it was just to acknowledge, if you like, and well, celebrate him. Mm -hmm. And because Munich was a, a place that he loved and uh, everyone loved. So it was all images in the studio at Munich or with a, a Munich-related theme. So there might have been a couple of pictures from the crazy video or the Gaga video, which were all done in Munich. So, and that went very well. Um, but now recently I've had these big shows in Italy with um, yeah. uh, a big one in Turin. Uh, currently it's in the South of Italy in Puglia and that finishes in a week or two. And then it goes to Rimini. Um, and then uh, I've got another one in Munich for the book, which will have images from the book. Right. And then at the start of December, I've got a really big one in Rome where we've got um, a lot more images and, you know, images that I've found. And we have these big panels and um, they just set the theme. And in the um, South American section, you open it up and there's a scoreboard, those old digital scoreboards. Mm -hmm. And it's from Sao Paulo and it says Queen. But some of the lights are missing, you know. And, it, ah. uh, and then there's a couple of guys walking along the, the upper level. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Level up and uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I mean, the publisher and the designer, they just loved it. Anyway, we have that in the show. It's three meters wide. Wow. And it's, <laughs> cool. and it's at the entrance, and you come in, and it just looks like, wow. Yeah. And what makes it great is because lots of the little lights are you know, not working. Yeah, I'm not working, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like the old football stadiums, you know, when you used to have those digital, well, not, I don't know if they're digital, whatever they were, and bits got yeah. missing and stuff. And um, yeah. So things like that, the pizza oven rig, you know, we got big three meter one oh, of that. Oh, oh that great. picture's amazing. That yeah. looks really good. Um, yeah. We've got um, that suitcase of mine with all the stickers on. Uh, mm -hmm. That one, uh, and so they kind of set the tone for the different um, different sections, and the sections of the show kind of follow the book a little bit. We put Munich and Montreux together. Uh, we got a live thing, which is yeah, sound check, live shows, kind of like that. A video section, and then uh, for the big show, we're going to have a bit of a South. American part as well, so stuff from there. And I've got, yeah, we're going to have a great big, they call them wallpapers, these big panels. And in the South American section, there's a picture, a double page spread, and it's the crowd before the first show in Buenos Aires. Um, all you can see is the crowd, and, um, you know, you couldn't get a sardine in there, and it's just <laughs> steaming. I mean, um, I don't know if you, if you can remember it. Where is it? It's... Uh, this one here. Oh, what oh, yeah, 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 an image. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's insane. And it um so it just people. sets the mood. And um yeah, I mean there's there's negotiations to take a show down to Argentina, but it's yeah, lots of uh, politics and whatever. But yeah, it'd be nice to do it. Um so those kind of images, uh again, they've never been seen and mm -hmm. I think the start of the chapter, you've got the guard, the Brazilian guard in front of John's guitar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And kind of just giving you that flavor of, um, of you know, what it's all about. And um, uh, 
and then kids in Rio, you've got people playing football on the beach and um, mm-hmm. yeah. To, yeah, just as I said, give you a flavour of, of the era and not just like pretty pictures of the band. And, um, yeah, yeah, totally, um, totally. The cities, I mean, probably one of my favourites in it is, um, where are we? That, that's quite nice. The on the road thing with that. Yes. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, oh, yeah. Which is, yeah, just says well, that's what on the road is all about. Oh, here we go. This is Japan. Um, so where the fuck is this other one? <laughs> it was in I uh, oh know ah uh, there. That the bird uh, yeah, oh, brilliant 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 picture, yeah. yeah. But with the it was a sticker I had, and I mean the lips, the red lips, and it yeah, just yeah. Thumbs up Berlin. That's what it was all yeah, about. This is the contrast um, between yeah, the party city yeah, and, uh, and the, the sort of exactly. communist and then I've got a picture here. That's the Val Buna in Berlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yep. He used to give his speech and all that. And then the oh, Olympic yeah. Stadium was behind. And when you look very, very, very closely, you'll see Brian is sat there anyway. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> That's the hot space thing. And then there's the Fest Halle in Frankfurt. And I tie it in because that's where most of Live Killers came from, from that oh, show. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, like here, you got um, uh, the Edwin Shirley truck and the sign off to Yugoslavia, and then mm-hmm. this thing here of the gig in Zagreb. And I mean, these have never been seen before, you know. Oh, so, awesome, yeah. I mean, just to say, gives a bit more depth to it, I think. Yeah, context, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, and there's a few stickers and, and bits and bobs and. Yeah, I mean, every time I look through it, I think, yeah, you know, it's quite nice. Um, yeah, is that one of Deaky laughing there? That's a great oh, yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant great picture. Great. And then there's a little matchbook. Uh, it's the Eden Hotel, which is where it was a kind of record company party when we were doing jazz or something. And, um, uh, yeah, so things like that. Um, Fred in the bushes, you know. I love that picture. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> And this one um, in the ballet school, and when you look really close, that's the only picture of them rehearsing there before. And you can see Brian's boogie amp. Um, you can see the ovation. You see Roger and his kit, uh, various little pedals. And and that's Fred's Steinway that we used to take on tour because that's what was used um, in uh, in the studio. <laughs> And then all these kind of things, like, you know, the final cassette of um, mm-hmm. jazz with all the running order. Yeah, um, I, mean, I love the one of, of Freddie. Uh, he's at the control uh, console and he's taking a draw of his fag. Oh, the fag, yeah. Just turned yeah. around. Just yeah, turned yeah, around. that's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people yeah. love that one. That's yeah. The one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a one. Oh, that's right. class, yeah. And that's Hot Space. And um, then you've got the whole Bowie thing. And then, you know, there's a very secret cassette there, which has got, um, you know, uh, people on the streets and, and a B-side that was never used. So uh, yeah, one I mean, of the people will pick up on that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. The, um, yeah, the track thing from Power Station. And then you've got, um, that's the, the original video, um, which uh, was banned because it was too political. Um, oh, really? Under oh, really? pressure, yeah. And he got... Oh, yeah. All kinds of, I think it's it was, probably because I had footage from Northern Ireland. I think it was, there's, it was there's yeah. riots. There were riots, yeah. and there was yeah, some, explosions and stuff. The, yeah. the, the American seal was shown being broken, and I think ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, it was like yeah. But that's a little bit about the Bowie thing, and of course John's here at the same time, and there's Roger uh, during the under pressure sessions with a Walkman, you know, and we all. And He's indoors wearing shades. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're proper glasses. Oh, are they right? <laughs> no, he ah, thought... always had bad eyesight. He always oh, really? had. Oh, and really? so okay, right. when you see him with all those shades, they were prescription yeah. lenses. Prescriptions. Ah, oh, right. That ah, makes ah, sense then. I thought he was just trying to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. That as well, yeah. He had, uh, we used to call him Blind Melon Taylor. That was his <laughs> brilliant blues player. Blind, oh, that's <laughs> excellent. So, um, 
Yeah, I mean, all those kind of little things like Super Bear in France. You got Roy Baker there on a little motorbike. That was the front of the place. Uh, Jeff, the so, engine. Jeff uh, Watman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff, yeah, sadly yeah. gone. Um, and again, no one's seen these pictures, so I felt this is the time to do it. I mean, the football team in, in sorry, in Brazil when we yeah. took on the uh, a local side, and um, yeah. uh, we did quite well, actually. Um, did Freddie play? He's <laughs> <no, no. laughs> <Yeah>, goals. <laughs> you've got Brian there with his son, uh, but the rest of it is the English and, uh, sorry, American crew, and there's a couple of the minders there, uh, sadly, not with us anymore, and a lot of people, sadly. But, um, but yeah, that's that. South America thing, you've got people playing football on the beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big yeah. Rio ticket, Ipanema Cafe, just, you know, to set the tone, really. Yeah, but I, I think that's what elevates it, you know, because it's, as yeah. you've said, uh, Peter, it's, it's given that that context of the whole, the, whole, the whole scenario you were in, the whole situation you were in, you know. I like this, uh, this one here. Um, and you've got, this is one we were loading in the 747 out of <laughs> And it's got a map, and the, and the production manager just just pointing. You are here. That was a queen. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the itinerary page for the American art, which never got done. You know, never got made. Right, okay. right, right. I think there might be somewhere in there. There's a page for Arsenal or Man United was supposed to play there, um, right. and never did on the Hot Space mm -hmm. Tour. So, yes. you know, there are things that fans don't necessarily know about them. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. there's, a really, there's a really good picture uh, of you, Peter, with uh, John. I, I think it looks like you're in an oh, airport yeah. or something. Get the headband on. Yeah, get the headband oh, yeah, yeah. on. Yeah. That's, a great, that's a great picture. <laughs> it was in South America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, I think it was after the first show. I was shattered. And it was, I was doing my impression of the uh, tennis player beyond belief, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> And there's also yeah. that picture of of you and one of the other roadies, and and it was in and one of the papers as being Roger and John, wasn't that? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, arriving in um in Rio, it was incredible. I mean, we, <laughs> we arrived before the band, and and I'm pushing me, you know, my luggage cart in, and then we had a VW van, and we were loading stuff in, and and all this press are taking pictures, and it's like. Yeah, Roger and John are going to have arrived. Trolleys through <laughs> into a Volkswagen van. <laughs> so I, kept, I kept that one for posterity. I thought I was a good laugh. So. Yeah, it was <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So yeah, all those kind of things. Um, uh, I mean, obviously they bring the memories back, but um, I just think they give it a bit of depth, and I hope that the people who buy it and read it and look at it. Yeah, appreciate that because oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, rather than just having a load of pictures of the band, um, so yeah, yeah. But that, that's as I mean, again, again, without without um, you know kissing your ass too much, Peter. <laughs> but it is what you've done here is you've given you've given Queen fans a gift here. You know, by pulling all this together, the information, your memories, all the little ephemera you were talking about, and put that into a book. That's that's a gift. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, right. It costs us money to buy it, but that's that's besides the point. It's, it's been, you know, it's something for us to get an even wider understanding of the band we love. You know, yep, totally. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm sure you you all know that these kind of things could have been done a long time ago and could have mm. been done with possibly a lot more material. But you know, yeah. whether the impetus was there to do it or the politics, mm. who knows? But yeah, um, totally. Uh, yeah, it was a kind of natural progression, really, after the biography book to do this one. And, and yeah. I just get a lot of requests, oh, you should do a, a, a photo book. And it was like, well, yeah, but I haven't got all these photos of the band, you know, from yes. the early days. I just don't have them because I didn't have a camera. And even mm -hmm. in the early days, it was like, mm, well, you know, you don't take pictures of the band. It was a little bit like that. So yeah. that was when I just had like an instamatic or something. So, but I think there's enough there from, you know, kind of night at the opera on uh, to give a little bit of, um, uh, because it is effectively my journey. It's not, um, you know, the complete definitive history of the band. It's, yeah. it's more 
I could give you, you know. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. And hopefully it's, uh, you know, it's enough to entertain people. So, and, and give absolutely. them yeah, a bit of pleasure. Good luck. Seventeen laugh. does, yeah. 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 Good laugh, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Well, that's like even looking through it, it was like, you know, yeah, I, I yeah. caught myself smiling a lot at the time, look at the pictures, reading the information. Yeah, and, totally. And, you know, um, so it was very, it was very nourishing actually looking at the, the book. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, and the cover I think works really well. It's a great cover. It's probably yeah. amazing. Amazing. I mean, that uh, is from, there's a wider shot of that in the book, I think. Um, and uh, in my other book, where Fred's at the keyboard sound check, I mean, they just cut him out and against white. But when you look at the scan really well, you can see his, um, uh, obviously, you see that's the piano, and on top of it, is the keyboard, uh, the OBX yeah. synthesizer, because mm -hmm. at that time they were doing Flash and Football Fight and all that. Yeah, yeah. synthesizer, yeah. But here, when you look at it on a screen, you blow it up, you can actually see John, and you can ah, see cool. the guys. Ah, ah, right. Not that clearly, but um, but you can see it. Is it. There. <laughs> so, it's, a, it's a fantastic picture. Ah, I mean, a, fantastic. It's a great picture, now. And it's that's just, the thing. It's your, your, your pictures, Peter, are, are the best as far as we're concerned. Yeah, they are totally. the best of the band. Uh, yeah. They're our favourites. Yeah. And, oh, thank you. you know, the most, pers um, the most personable, definitely 100%. But even know. from a technical standpoint, not that yeah, I'm a photographer yeah. or anything, I don't but know anything about great, photography, yeah. but they just, they, some of these pictures are just absolutely outstanding. You know. Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, Interestingly, um, a few months ago, I met up with Neil Preston, who did, mm -hmm. you know, so many live shots of the band. And um, he's done the classic Freddie leaning back at Wembley with the, you know, yes. the yeah. stadium. And I mean, Neil's live shots. I, I mean, his book, I mean, it's your jaw goes down. I mean, yeah. Yeah. he's photographed everybody and, and so well. And um, it was for... It's something, it's some, I don't know, cable channel or streaming thing in the States. And it's about his career. And he wanted to talk to me. And we went to the Gibson Guitar Showroom. And um, the day before, he'd been filmed with Jimmy Page because he was Zeppelin's tour photographer. And um, right. and his, but his live stuff is just yeah. magnificent. No, it's fantastic. I mean, shots of Bruce Springsteen and you'd have to get the book to see it. And ah, yeah. It Bruce Springsteen's foot, the toe of his foot is just off the floor and he's got his guitar and it's just like he's about to tap it down in time. And mm. just little, those moments. And um, I mean, Neil, and he's a great guy. He was really, really yeah. good. And um, But his live stuff. Um, well, he did do um, a Queen book as well as his own book. Um, ah, right, right. Yeah, yeah uh, I think out, actually. it's called the South America Years or something. Yeah, there's like the the, the covers are, is a it's like police a, a row of police standing in front of a crowd yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't know that cover. Yeah, 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 I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Then um, his book with all the other bands and stuff he's done. It's called Exhilarated and Exhausted or something, mm -hmm. and the cover is Roger's drum kit after he's trashed it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's from the pizza oven rig, and the pizza oven rig is there, and the bass drum is almost at the front of the stage. And um, ah, I, I mean, it's worth getting because I mean, it, it's yeah. a wonderful photography book. Um, mm -hmm. It really, really is. So, um, yeah, good. I mean, uh, he got just that knack. Um, yeah. And also, because he was a nice guy and he got on with the crew, we'd let him do stuff on stage, you know. Uh, yeah. And he knew that we had a job to do. And so he would never get in the way. If you just tapped him on the shoulder or whatever, he, he'd just move straight back, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, so, and he, you know, that's why he'd say to Chris Lok, can I just get up on the drum riser at the end here, you know. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, he'd say, Raddy, can I just come down by the piano just for this? Uh, well, actually, Neil, I've got this cue. Okay, just tell me when. And so, yeah. There was a real respect, whereas a lot of photographers, you know, of that ilk uh, tend to be a little bit aggressive and, um, yeah. you know, think they're above themselves. And um, mm -hmm. I know Terry O'Neill uh, was very similar. I mean, he sadly passed away a few years ago. Mm -hmm. 
and he did so much without them. And um, uh, everyone says he was the same, you know, respected people and their jobs. And, and he got yeah. wonderful stuff of, of, of Elton. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I was in, I was in a, a privileged position. But, you know, when you're in a position, you have to take advantage of it. And if you don't, yeah, um, you know, do that and apply it. I mean, I found, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Or you apply yourself, then things in life often kind of happen for you. But um, true, yeah. if you sit on your ass, you know, then they don't tend to. So, yeah, yep. Totally. Looking back, I think, you know, wow, I really did that, you know, and why yeah. did I go out and do that? But, you know, it was what, drove me back then what i love to do and um uh and i'm glad that i've got i've got most of it you know of course it'd yeah. be lovely to have all of it but um uh i think it's a pretty good pretty good span so so uh, i mean does anybody have a, a favorite shot or well my i've actually taken a, a list of i think i might have discussed them already, <laughs> you got i've list. got too many i've got too many uh, <laughs> there, there is too many there's I mean, Freddie with uh, Augustina. I mean, that's obviously a, a, a I, well, massive favourite, you know. So, I've already got a print of uh, one of my favourites, and that is the the We Will Rock You video that I got off you. Ah, uh, yeah, last year. Ah, right, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, which yeah. is a, a, is like the second page of the book or something. Yeah, it is. It is yeah. yeah. Um, I, I love that, and and I've got to say the the picture of the pizza oven, just you know, without the band and Thanks. all that, brilliant, just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I mean, there's also in the video section, there are some different shots from uh, the Rock You video. I think there's some black and white ones in there. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. different. Um, uh, okay, they're, they're all great. I mean, I'm, I'm scrolling through it. It's like, um, you know, the play the game video as well. Yeah, yeah brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wanted to show yeah. that um, the one I got of him jumping off the kit that – I only got one hit because it was, you know, the Hasselblad camera and you're like that and you're looking through and you get one hit and then you have to wind the film on. And yeah. I just wanted to show that I didn't quite get him on one or two, you know. Or, <laughs> so, <Yeah>. <laughs> that <laughs> sequence was quite nice. So to make it more real that it is photography and it was, yeah. well, you know, it wasn't the digital age and um the one, the one Fred, he's like, he's like a star, <laughs> you know, star shape. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's really good. Actually, it looks like Roger's fist is... We won't go there, you know, but um, <laughs> uh, 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 positioning. And there's one where actually, um, when he's got water being poured on him. Yeah, that one's oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. He's getting no yeah. top on. Pouring down, <laughs> and he's just like, you know, a oh, fuck. <laughs> Like, <laughs> fuck this. Um, Brilliant. All those kind of yeah, off uh, off screen moments, if you like. Those are those are the best ones, I think. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the, the, like those ones that you know the band are like almost like kind of pissed off <laughs> in some of the shots. Those are great. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you one of my because I only found this image recently. I mean, I could I found some negatives, and then I was looking through, and I thought. Why the fuck have I never printed this? Hang on. Um, and it is now, it's become very, very popular. Uh, oh, that's the one I was telling you, the sign, that one there. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Ah, that's amazing. Uh, the old, yeah, like the old 1978 World Cup, you know? That, oh, yeah, it's yeah. gold. This one here. Um, that's the ah, one. I love yes. that picture. Yeah, that is brilliant. Yeah. He looks. He looks a bit Salvador like Salvador Dali <laughs> with his, his tash turned up. And, yeah, totally. Aye. And again, for me, he'd make that expression. You know. Yeah, yeah. totally. Was, was for another photographer, it'd be. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, yeah. serious. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that that's quite nice. Um, and, I think Paul, you were talking before we came on as well. Um, you were talking about that image of the Edinburgh Playhouse where you had to actually load oh, yeah. the stuff. Oh yeah, the, yeah. Ah, the crane. Yeah, I had to get a crane with a net. I mean, because it was 
well, the place is built on a hill. All of Edinburgh is on hills, you know. Yeah. yeah. You literally had to have all the gear in a net up to a scaffold platform and then wheel it in through a hole in the wall. Wow. Right. Health and safety, yeah. <laughs> Never existed, mate. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, so just those kind of images. Must be, uh, is that a thing about Scottish venues? Because you were, you were complaining about the Apollo the last time oh, we spoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, that, was, that was one of the worst. Uh, all the way through until they got a side entrance years later but um yeah but it was a tiny stage as well yeah. however as you know i mean as a gig i mean i played there with bowie i played there with mott played there with lou reed with mick ronson with queen and um yeah uh, uh it was um it was a hell of a an atmosphere you know it's funny because only a couple of nights ago i was at something and um, Andy Mackay from Roxy Music, sax player, um, mm -hmm. he was there and we were chatting about the old days, you know, and saying about um, those venues and, and how great they were, you know, even though they were difficult sound-wise sometimes, but mm -hmm. those theatres, that kind of theatre circuit of Britain, um, mm -hmm. you know, which were cinemas and whatever, or small theatres, and uh, just the energy and, and just yeah. how much fun it was, you know? Um, mm, yeah. So, yeah, so that was quite interesting. So, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I mean, Roxy were a good good live band as well anyway. Yeah, yeah. Great band. Cause, yeah. Uh, and I didn't realise, I'd forgotten all about it. Um, he played the saxophone solo on All the Way to Memphis from Mott. You know, the song? Oh, ah, yeah. right, right, right. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And he said... Yeah, he said, yeah, I did that. I mean, <laughs> such a lovely bloke. He's so understated. Oh, yeah, I did that one. Of oh, course. Cool. Mm. <laughs> That's, uh, That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah from, from those days. And um, and I think there's uh, – it's the summer of 76, that chapter I did about uh, Ridge Farm and the Manor and then Edinburgh and Hyde Park and Cardiff. And you've got an enormous, you know, an Arctic full of gear to go to Ridge Farm. And I think you've this picture. Yeah, that is, yeah, yeah. all Back the cases. Farm, and then all the flight cases, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, so, uh, I'm sure people will say, well, that's not a picture of Freddie uh, or it's not a picture of the band. And to those I, I, people, I'd say, oh, fuck off. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. we, 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 we can call. <laughs> I, I would just say, well, you know, if you want pretty pictures of the band, go and buy the pretty picture books. But yeah, this yes. is something mm -hmm. else. Well, this the book... book the book's as much about your journey as it is about Queen in a lot of ways. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, yeah. your, your, you know, your experience with the band and stuff. So, and and the era, because um, yeah, totally. as I said, it's like, um, you know, having an Arctic to put all the gear, you know, into a black and white barn. Whereas mm -hmm. now, you know, you just take a couple of laptops with you and a guitar. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Totally. yeah and you're ready to go. Yeah. And, and just to show, you know, physically what you had to do. And, mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a picture of Fred playing tennis there and Roger by the mm. pool and, you know, and all those things that have never been seen. And there's an overhead shot of Roger's drum kit. With oh, yeah, that's a great shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you see the white piano, which was the bow rap piano. Um, mm. ah. that, uh, Fred used to play, played at Hammersmith, played at Hyde Park. And then when we went into Ridge Farm, he said, I want the piano there. So... Mm -hmm. that, that white Beckstein. So, mm -hmm. yeah, all those kind of um, uh, little stories and all those things that all the experts claim to know and get them wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the book can, can sort of say, well, actually, no, it was like this, you know. Yes, definitely, uh, definitely. And there's a picture, actually, again, never been seen, I particularly like, um, and again, it's in that thing, summer of '76. Uh, where are we? Uh, that's Ridge Farm. Because then we come on to Hyde Park, and yeah, and it's Jerry Stickles. Oh yeah, but that's and he's in the production office, and the plans behind. They all have, if you look in the top left, it's got a big Q and it's like yeah. specifically yeah. 
done and there's the map of Hyde Park and then there's the um, the tent which was the stones tent and then there's ah. a can of Heineken in the foreground so uh, <laughs> and um and it was just a porter cabin and that was it on site you know so I really like that um yeah it's a cool image yeah Mark Ward and just puts puts it into context you know so. totally I like the one where you the picture you showed even of the the um the money you got for selling out the Buddha can. Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know it's, it's like it's basically like yeah. two pound fifty or something. But yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. and it was I think every band uh, anyone who played there um, it was something. If it sold out, everyone got a little bonus. But but the envelope is in, in a lovely Japanese graphics yeah, and it's lovely uh, looking, yeah. Because in the Japan section, there's a lot of all that kind of color of Japan and um, the yeah. bullet trains and all those weird graphics and that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And I say I unashamedly wanted that in to show how it was then and how I experienced it, as well as you know uh, the band on stage and stuff. So um, absolutely. Yeah. So, oh, anyway, I'm very, very pleased you guys like it. So, uh, oh, it's amazing. Oh, yeah, I've not just seen that. As it's it's thanks, nice thanks, thanks so much for letting us have a look at it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know, thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I've done quite a bit of press already, um, which is quite nice. So people seem to like it, um, and um, yeah, hopefully it'll, yeah, it'll. It'll do all right, and um, yeah. you know, fill that gap if you like. That um, I think, I think there are fans out there who um, you know feel there's there's room for something like this. So. Oh well, Indeed. we are we are yeah. three, us three definitely, yeah. And really, I think yeah. it's it's as we kind of alluded to earlier on. It, it 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 depends on who it comes from. You know, the information comes from how, how much you trust it and how much you how much value yeah. you put into it. And I think coming from yourself, Peter, it's it's yeah. you know it's it's you know you can trust every word, you can trust every image. That's not well, you know. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'm a bit, a bit skeptical about that one. But, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's 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 very true. Um, and and just just to to let the the listener, um, you, you you if you purchase this book, you will absolutely not be disappointed. Um, no, um, really it's an absolutely. I mean, even seeing you with it, Peter, there you've shown us it on the the screen there. It, you know, can't wait to get my hands actually on the physical thing because it just looks looks amazing, you know. And um, I don't think anyone who's a Queen fan will be disappointed in this book no. in any shape or form. You yeah, know, totally agree. Well, that's uh, that's great. And I did have um, a little bit of help from people, um, some friends who have. Um, uh, like tickets. I mean, you know, uh, I was lucky I didn't have to buy a ticket to a show. So, um, uh, <laughs> and there were some, you know, kind of um, rarer tickets, but it was nice to have like the ticket from um, uh, Yugoslavia, the old Yugoslavia. So, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and I know some collectors and they let me have that. And there's a, a track list for the works, which was, um, not the yes thing, which yeah. is man yeah. on fire in it and different things like that, mm-hmm. and that belongs to a, a collector friend. So oh, okay, would be, yeah, awesome. happy for me to have it, and yeah, mainly little tickets and, and stuff like that. Uh, Just to fill in the story, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah that, because yeah. Um, I mean, I I don't have everything. I mean, there are uh, collectors who got you know all kinds of memorabilia um, that um, clearly uh, I don't have. Um, and um, there is in there in the Munich section, I don't know if you've seen it, there is a track sheet from um, uh, the the tape box and it's got crazy and it tells you uh, which track the bass drum is. And the, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 There's another one, Bites of Dust, Crazy. Mm. I think Don't Try Suicide. Don't Try Suicide, yes. Uh-huh. And it says kick, drum, bass, whatever. So you, And that's how... You know, you wrote uh, the tracks out, and you knew where everything was. Yeah. And in the, the opposite page, you got uh, John and Mac working together, and I know that was when they were working on another one, "Bites of Dust" together. Oh, awesome. Uh, Excellent. Working on the tape loop of the drum, and then I somehow I got I was given a little badge, another one, "Bites of Dust." So he just dropped that up in the corner, you know. But um. <laughs> But um, you see, because Mac had written all that stuff out, there's no problem. 
but the um, the works track list is that was in Max hand. So oh, yeah, real case. Yep. Uh-huh. I mean, if it was in John's hand, I mean, in theory, you'd have to get John's approval. But of course, John doesn't really have any communication anymore, sadly, with anybody. Um, yeah. I don't think he'd have an issue with me putting it in. But um, sure. mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, it's a shame that those things can't go in, but. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that many i think there are still um you know enough interesting revealing kind of things you know that um that go you know go along with everything to make up a, a bigger picture and, and deeper story so, yeah. and i found a matchbook the other day and um where are we oh yeah now i'm not sure what it means by this it says the brook Disco. It says "Go Gay," but I don't think it's a gay. <laughs> <laughs> it says Westport East, Connecticut. You know. Oh, and, really? um, okay. I mean, and I'll show you. Hang on. I'll, I found these, um, and these might go into version two. And there's loads of these kind of things, and these matchbooks from all around the world. You know, from like you know, some. Remington Saloon from Chicago, Illinois. Oh, um, nice. That is brilliant. <laughs> stuff from, uh, where are we, you know, Hotel Bayer Roma Isheroff or something in, in Dortmund. And uh, just stuff, the stuff from Montreux. Spindle Top Truck Stop, Vidor, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> but they they kind of tell those stories, you know. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, this place, wherever it is, Hollywood Boulevard. You know, I mean, so, <laughs> you'll be able to Google all these places now. I'd imagine you probably Hollywood Boulevard. Out, yeah. <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> no, the no, other no, one. Doing yeah, cheeky <laughs> bastard. Spencer's Corner, across from the university in Fort Worth, Texas. You know. And I had some from gigs and, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Um, airlines, you know, who don't exist anymore. Pan yeah. Am and TWA. Um, uh, San Francisco, Beverly Hills, Matchbook. I mean, nice. yeah, so, yeah, for volume two, um, you know, I think um, we could probably pull out a few more. But, and I found yeah. a whole bag up at my mum's in a shed the other day, so... So, yeah, maybe we'll do some spreads with these on, you know, because they all yeah. tell – and they're very colourful, and they tell stories. Well, yeah, when, totally. And everyone smoked for a start, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, everybody smoked back then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and, of course, you know, all these were Freddie's personal matchbooks. Every oh, I, oh, yeah, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, of course. <laughs> they're sitting about two million pounds there, mate. <laughs> he, um, he personally told me to look after them for him. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the mug, the mug. Yep. the mug that he used for his tea in um, yeah. uh, town. <laughs> this the other day. Um, it, yeah, one of Fred's mic clips, the old mic clip. Wow, man. Oh, cool. Ah, that is fucking excellent. <laughs> you see, it, it, it's beat up a bit. And it's got a bit of old bits of old tape on it. and That's, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That's superb. That is excellent. That so, is... So, yeah, I mean, you know, when I need the hip operation, that will yeah, oh, yeah, so <laughs> that'll that'll get you a couple of hip operations. Exactly. <laughs> I do have the mic as well, so that's all right. Yeah, oh. I remember you. I think it was in the one show or something you were talking about that. Uh, you had the mic out and you were, you were, you were d- d- demonstrating. I love that clip. Yeah. I totally well, I've, got a, I've got one of the stage mics, but I've got this gold one. It's not real gold. It was um, um for... Uh, hang on, I'll get it for you. I'll show it to you. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow, man, that's amazing. <laughs> that's class, isn't it? <laughs> yep. So Peter's away to get <laughs> Freddy's mic. He's away to get Freddy's mic to show us Freddy's mic. Amazing. That, uh, I don't know, that dust might have been worth something. Ah, yeah, that's at least two <laughs> grand worth of dust you just blew off you that there. <laughs> in a sure box, and you open it up, and it's a bit... Bit tacky. Wow. Oh, jeez. Oh, man, that's, that's oh, amazing. God. It's sticking to the foam. Oh, shit. It's all. Oh, this isn't good. All the foam is all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. Right. Uh. right. So you can see that it's old and it's genuine, but um, 
you nah, that all will come off. Um, it says here, you can probably see it says circus award or something. Ah, yeah, yeah. 1980. 1980. Yeah. And then it says Queen underneath there, sure. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Eh? Anyway, oh, yeah. and it was given to Fred and he gave it to me. And he used it once and he used it on top of the pops to do Las Palabras d'Amour. Oh, oh right. yep, yep, totally. Yes. You yeah, find um, a clip of that and. Um, it's not with his wand, Mike. It's just on a straight up. Stand. Yeah, That's yeah, it's on yeah, a stand. Yeah. Right. yeah, and it's well, it was in better nick than that. Now you can see, but it's um, I'll have to take it out of this case. Um, wow, because all this foam <laughs> stuff just disintegrates. But yeah, but that's the one. Circus sure music, because 1980 was obviously the game, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it is. It's one of his types of mic. I mean, it wasn't one they took and. Gold, they just did it, you know, themselves. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So, so that one, um, yeah, that might be a care home for a year or so. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Aye. A really good care home. Aye. 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 Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't put things like that in the book. Um, I mean, maybe in the next one, people might be yeah. interested. I yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely something yeah. that. Well, thanks very much for showing us it. Cause that's. No idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that will uh, one day, uh, or it'll go to my great nephews or whatever. So, realistically, when you see what you know a silver toothpick holder went for in the sale, um, <laughs> well, well, that's that. I think yeah. that's worth a few quid more. So, I mean, yeah, just, just, I, I, just I, a few, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, I mean, the bottom line is obviously I've got the provenance, um, but the fact is you can see it. On that clip as well, you know. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. I love that totally. clip actually because he's wearing uh, he's wearing uh, I a think tux and trainers. tux and and trainers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was in the studio, top of the pops. I mean, that was yeah. Uh, well, I think we only ever went in twice. I mean, I know they did kill a queen there, but um, mm -hmm. did old uh, lover boy, old fashioned lover boy. Oh, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Top yeah. of the pops and. Um, and that was it, yeah. So, yeah, yeah Brian's Brian's playing that that Japanese copy, isn't he? Of I think so. Guitar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah, there were a lot of early copies. Um, I mean, Gil yeah. did a copy, and yeah, I mean, had that as a backup for a while. Um, so, um, yeah, that was before he's got. Well, he's got his own company now, and he knocking him yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, if you were to say what are your favourite pictures, I would say that um, the Augustina one, uh, the yeah. beer one, you know, because of the way I've been luckily able to capture him looking a little bit, um, you know, uh, sensitive and reflective. Yes. Yeah, uh, well, at the weird. same time, um, you know, against a dirty wall. I mean, because I think yes. I've seen the copy... I've been taking these pictures of the band and you'll see some in the book where there's a blue background and there's Max in there with them. And um, uh, they're just standard, you know, promo shots. And then he yeah. said to me, come on, he said, I want you to make me look mean and moody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we went over by the dirty old wall and um, I changed the lighting to a bit of side lighting. And, and that was it. And then he kind of just dropped his head and, so that one, yeah, I love that one. Um, yes. And also because um, unashamedly, it's made me a lot of money in Munich, so I can't tell. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the directors of Augustina have all bought big um, uh, signed numbered editions, so that can't be bad. No, uh, not indeed. And, um, yeah, the one of him at the piano with John in silhouette. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing. The one of him with the prawn outfit. Um, where he looks like Darley. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love that yeah. picture. Yep, yep. Totally. Yeah. The cover, I think the cover image, um, I think looks good. Um, John laughing, uh, I love that yeah. one. Um, yep. The the Brian drumsticks one, where you don't see his Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Yeah, it's a good one. 
So um, there's a good there's a good one of Brian as well. He's up against a wall. 1986. It says. With the flares yeah. on. With the flares, <laughs> he's wearing flares. Yeah. And yeah, there's that's um, a cool shot. There's another one that I took, um, and it was I set the camera up on the hot space tour. And we had these moving triple spotlights. And then during his guitar solo, Brian used to kind of battle them like they were like a UFO. All right. And, um, and there's a picture taken from the other one down, and he's kind of facing up to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they look like these UFOs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Funny enough, the I think it's the Daily Mirror. They want to run a spread, and they wanted to use that shot. Um, ah, there we go. Yeah, it's a oh, good, yes. uh, one. awesome uh, picture. Yeah, it's like yeah. close encounters or something, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. so that was um, yeah, that's never been seen. Uh, there's Morgan Fisher there um, on the Hot Space Tour, and then um, uh, where are we? Because we got Fred Mandel. It's a Fred. Yeah, Mandel. Fred. Yeah. Yeah. There. So, because um, he's, uh... yeah, we, we we had him on. Yeah, a he's a really man. really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice we've had on. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely, such yeah. a nice guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, he. Funny enough, the picture here, which say it's never been seen before, um, and you've got Fred at the piano, and your Freddie and the band are here. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah. I took these pictures for Fred. He gave me his camera and he said, would you take uh, some pictures? Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Anyway, I then asked him and said, Fred, do you still have any of those pictures? And he, he dug them out and scanned them and sent them to me. So oh, I mean, effectively, they're my pictures. So it's not. Yeah, yeah totally. It's not cheating. You know? So <laughs> and the other one with the piano. So, um but no, he's um, no, nah, he's an absolute top bloke, and uh, yeah, yes. oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and a, a talent man. like you wouldn't believe, you know. Oh, mm. And yeah, oh, well. say Mike Moran, yeah. I would yeah. put him, yeah, similar kind of level, you know. I mean, um, Mike's more yeah. of an arranger, and and uh, but you know, but Fred's Fred Mandel's just his natural talent, and just incredible. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I know both of them top top blokes. So, um, and it was nice that they were very happy to come on board. And um, obviously, Mac. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, there would have been other people if they'd still been alive. But um, sadly, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. But um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Now, overall, I think it's um, it's a nice trip down memory lane. You know. So indeed, indeed. Uh, and even looking through the photos there, I mean, I talk about favourites. I started just having a look through there and, and you're like wow this picture this picture no maybe this yeah, one. That's <laughs> so another, kind of, there's, yeah. There are, there's a lot <laughs> um even yeah. just this one of john here um i think it, oh it, yeah it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shades yeah. On, yeah. Love, yeah love that picture as well that's in uh, uh mexico yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and it's a double spread and there's brian and there's him right. yeah. no the other side right. yeah. The, yeah yeah and there's um where are we brian with his dandy our t-shirt on that's pretty cool that's right. There's um, he used to wear that a lot, actually. Where's the one? Oh, there are things like this. Um, it's on this. There, there's a cassette, and yeah. it's uh, it says uh, Freddie Mercury, Billy Squire, Love is the Hero, and then it's been written there. Rat is copy, so it's like oh, we... <laughs> <"That's cool." laughs> have those kind of. And there's a picture of Fred and Billy in the studio as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's a picture with uh, John playing the pinball machine with the cheap trick t-shirt on. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's a good one as well. Yeah, and um, yeah, as I said at the start, you have like this is on the road, so you have on the road here like that, and then the chapter, and you always have three images up here, two or three, and this was the trucking company we used in '76. It's just like let's get the show on the road, and I, I love those kind of things because it yes yeah totally. it's memories for me, but it's it just sets it up, you know. And then absolutely, uh, where are we? Ah, now this one you probably can't see it on the scan. This is Cobo Hall in Detroit, and it was a really uh, amazing venue, very famous, and uh, you've got. On, on the billboard outside, people are coming, 
You've got the Detroit Pistons versus Houston. There's Rush, there's Kiss, there's Queen, there's Leroy Jenkins, there's the world's greatest gospel show, and then there's wrestling. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> what well, a eclectic bunch. <laughs> I just love that. I just thought that's yeah, you know, Aye, that's class. You're well, all, I know you who that is. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's seventy-seven. That is, yeah, yeah it's it's totally. a, there's a ticket, Cobra Hall with Thin Lizzy. Oh, that's, oh yeah, that's that amazing. Was, I mean, a yeah. friend supplied me with those tickets, you know. Um, but that was out the window of the hotel in the snow, you know. And um, yeah, yeah, it's like tonight it's Queen, and then next week it's wrestling or the world's greatest <laughs> possible show. <Jones>, so, <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then for the jazz party. Yeah, you know, there's pictures of New Orleans with jazz and or, mm-hmm. just to kind of give you that. And there's the itinerary it tells you the party, yeah, pizza oven, and then that kind of just stuff all about America. And we had a girl bus driver who didn't take any nonsense from anybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, good. He was great. Um, and then just things like that, you know, that kind of anonymous hotel. Maybe. Yeah. So, Yeah. Yeah, um, and then um, it just says rock and roll, rock and roll bar and restaurant open seven nights from eight p.m. You know, so that's I think you need to know really, isn't it? You know? That's yeah, it, absolutely. That's it. <laughs> Everything <laughs> you know right there. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, there. As you know, there's a ton of pictures in there, and there was a ton we left out. And, yeah. Quite a lot of unseen ones, but um, fingers crossed, you know. Yeah, maybe there'll be another book. Maybe um, we'll uh, do uh, a Munich one, or I don't know. Depends what the publisher wants. So, awesome. but, um, yeah, we'll Go fingers to that. Crossed, so, yeah. yeah. Well, listen. Good luck with the book. I'm sure um, you've, you've said with the the advanced sales, it's it's looking pretty good anyway. But um, oh. but yeah, good luck with it because it deserves to be seen, and and I think yeah. it will yeah. be. If you've enjoyed this episode, um, which uh, I'd be cr- crazy if you didn't, really, to be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> justgiven.com forward slash page forward slash queen hyphen uncovered, and again, the link will be in the description of, for the podcast. So uh, so yeah, thank you very much, Peter. Yeah, Peter, thank you for your time. Thank you. It's been brilliant. Uh, always a pleasure to speak to you guys. And um, yeah. Well, thanks again, Peter. And we'll leave it there. So thanks, everyone, for listening. And please buy Queen Uncovered. Um, you will not be disappointed. And uh, please, again, donate if you can. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.